So, all right, um, hello. <laughs> I have so many ideas that are going through my, my head and my day. Sometimes it's really hard for me to figure out exactly what I want or what I'm inspired to talk about because I had started these YouTubes to share this journey that I had spoken about in the beginning to chronicle a journey and boy has it been a journey. Um, I And also discovering that I've been this way probably my whole life and didn't know it and so, so that is an, another interesting component of this. Um, this idea, and, and I don't think I'm the only one, like I think we're all um, outside of time and space and in all these dimensions and we're just living this life and we just don't realize that we are, are these um, multi-dimensional beings on the planet. <laughs> and so um, one of the things that I, so it was like, okay, so what is the most important thing that I really wanted to share? Because it has been so interesting, like what ended up happening in, excuse me, <laughs> in, in May was that I, it sort of went like what I would call quantum, that my brain, I guess maybe I started to believe or I felt, um, I had a moment of despair, the same things that have been said by Eckhart Tolle and, and David Hawkins, um, two people that I had studied, and um, where they were in despair and they woke up changed, because um, that did happen to me. I, I went to bed um, with something that just really tore me to shreds. I, I went to bed in utter despair and I woke up in the middle of the night, what I would call levitating. <laughs> I mean, nobody was there to see it, except I knew what it felt like. It was sort of like I was just levitating in the love of God, just completely embraced, and, and I was just changed. And I started to see all these synchronicities that happen, like actually almost consistently all the time, all day long. Um, things that I can't I can't explain it. It's just too weird. Like it can't be a coincidence. Like, there are no if there are no coincidences, then the universe is God, m my God, the God of love and benevolence, um, is is continually sending me information of of love and direction and people to stop and talk to. Um, and it's been very interesting in that because I see every situation in its highest capacity. I'm having a hard time navigating and I asked the universe for a personal assistance. What I know it sounds like kind of ridiculous, but I'm having a hard time even focusing enough to do like things that I, they need to be done because my head is like literally in the clouds all the time. Oh, I was supposed to do that. Uh, but then as I'm looking back on it, like my, my, what I said, well, something happened with my insurance and it messed up my car loan and everything has gone wrong at this one bank. Um, the situation has just been very interesting to me. And I, I fell off my high horse again yesterday about the situation, even though I know it's going to work out. It, it, um, like, because I know it's going to work out, I don't understand how this happened in the first place. Like, you know, having to, there's just so much distrust out there. There's just complete distrust in people, even though I really have done nothing wrong. I have not defrauded anyone. I have not, um, not paid my bills. I have not, you know, but they have just sort of treated me with contempt, you know, after 10 years, after years of banking at a certain bank. Uh, anyway, it's a long story that I don't want to get into. But I did want to talk also about, um, I had seen something on Instagram. I spend a period of time every day on Instagram checking in with people and inspiration. And I had gone on Instagram and I had seen something, I can't remember who he was, but he had talked about anticipation and anticipation being 
the worst part. And, and I got to thinking about that. It, it really didn't resonate with me at all. It didn't resonate with me at all because it's the process. Like, like I'm going to give an example. Like I remember, um, I don't know if other people felt this way, but Christmas seemed like this incredibly like stressful event. It just was stressful and then every year you had this like traumatic remembrance of this stressful event and so Christmas you know a time where people actually kill themselves more than any other time of the year because we're supposed to be with family and if we're not with family there's something wrong with us but anyway that's a whole other time I have a whole I'll talk about the, the half happiest season of all like it's really cold and everything's dead they're just trying to to trick us into this happy place and people aren't buying stuff because they're they're hunkered in so you got to go out and buy presents for everyone you know it's just a, a just a <laughs> it's actually a ridiculous holiday in that sense but it's also really beautiful because people actually make the effort to get together and actually be very giving so it, you know two sides of the coin anyway that's another story um, but the preparations for Christmas are supposed to be joyful. So it's supposed to be fun to go, okay, what do you think this person would like? And you and you make effort and then you you wrap the gifts carefully and you 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 put your tree together and in my case you put your nativity out and you have family and friends and you get your menu together and you prepare meals together and everybody sits and eats together and it's like it's a this is a beautiful beautiful thing but if you don't enjoy the process of it then don't do it take a cruise <laughs> and it's also with our lives like I think that most most people that I see were just like me. I had the idea advantage that I loved my job. I absolutely loved what I did. I coached, I worked in early childhood for 20 years. I've worked with young children with disabilities and otherwise and teachers and directors and coached on how to raise quality for young children. And I loved my job, so I was very lucky, but I barely made enough money to make ends meet. I mean, there were times, I mean, I have credit cards because I had to buy groceries for my children. I had to get gas in my car because I was making at top $40,000 a year. I have a master's degree. I did everything right, supposedly, as, as the world's standards are. And I'm just supposed to be so happy that I have a job. I'm supposed to be so grateful that I just go into slavery for my $40,000 a year. And, and it wasn't that I wasn't grateful because I loved my job. But this is how we keep people, and, and I was doing things right, which I think most people are. They go to work to care for their families. But wouldn't it be so much better if we all had this opportunity to, to do what we loved and actually be opulent in it? So it would have been great if I, if I were going to work, if I were going to work at a job and I was being paid what I was actually worth. At, at, what was I actually worth? What were my hours actually worth? And I, and I, and I made this comparison also to, I was married to a man that is ex, a very successful business owner. And he went to college, but he, he didn't have a degree and he got $50,000 from his family and he, and he bought this business and he is incredibly wealthy. And he makes over $250,000 a year. And I think that is fantastic. So I tell my son, think like he does because he thinks as an opulent person. So it's all in our beliefs. And I haven't quite figured out how to, how to, um, it's sort of like a great big jug of water. You know, those, those water jugs that you go over with your cup and you push it and the water comes out. I just haven't quite figured out how to have the water come out, but I know that it's coming. 
Anyway, my 10 minutes are, are up, so I'm gonna go. I love you. I may do another video today because I'm not done. I have so much to say. Bye. Love you. Bye.